Now what we're gonna do is start the recipes app so we can really dive in deep on user-generated content. So let's go ahead and jump in to the root of our project where manage.py is, and we'll go ahead and do python manage.py and start app recipes. Okay, so inside of this recipes app, let's go ahead and jump into the models and let's just really think about the things that recipes have. So it's really two things, right? A recipe has ingredients and directions for those ingredients. Now, the thing about recipes and ingredients is they can actually exist outside themselves, right? So ingredients exist without recipes and vice versa. And so these are two different data points that we could potentially track. But of course, ingredients are also a part of recipes, so they sort of intertwine there. Now, there's another thing is this could all be the user or one single user data, and it would still include a lot of those same things. And now the global data that says everybody might have those things as well. So we're not going to focus on the global stuff just yet, but we will focus on the user generated side, the individual user with their own ingredients and their own recipes. But starting with recipes themselves, because we're going to start from the top and then work our way down deeper and deeper. So what does this look like then? We're going to go ahead and say class recipe. And of course, this is going to be models.model. And, you know, what are the attributes of any given recipe? Now, there's probably things that I'll miss in this, but I'm going to go ahead and write them out for now. So we'll say user, as in the user is going to be adding this recipe. They will have access to it and literally only them. I'm not going to worry about having global anything just yet, only for the single user. Next, you might want to name the recipe, you know, like, you know, grilled um, chicken pasta something like that, right? Uh, and next, you might have a description. Then we might also have a full-on, you know, text area or something like that for the ingredients, okay? Now, this is a big question if whether or not this should be on the model, which we'll talk about. Next, we also probably want to know when it was added, when it was last updated, and you know, whether or not this is an active ingredient or an active recipe, like maybe this user wants to hide them or something. Um, so we'll have some sort of Boolean value for that. And so this might be the cornerstone of the recipe. I mean, perhaps the description would be the directions, maybe not. So let's go ahead and add in one for directions as well, like what to actually do with the ingredients. The description is just like a lovely Tus Tuscan chicken pasta that I found on this book, right? So maybe that's the description. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time thinking about all of these fields because we know migrations and we can change these fields in the future. It's really more about the fundamental parts. So uh, we'll leave it like this. But here, here's one that should probably really stick out. And the reason it sticks out is because of what we talked about before. Ingredients and recipes can exist separately and together at the same time. Now, we already looked at something like this, and that was in models in our article. An article can exist on its own. A user can exist on its own. So, yeah, that means that we actually want our ingredients to be a foreign key to this recipe. That actually combines them. We'll talk about the relationships they have, both direct relationships and reverse relationships. We'll talk about that later. But the idea here is I actually don't want to have ingredients inside of the recipe model itself. Instead, I want to make reference to it. So uh, ingredients down here. And of course, it's going to be just the single one of ingredient and it's going to be models.model. And when I say I have, I'm going to have re reference to it, I'm just going to go ahead and say recipe equals right here. And again, it's just to think through what features or what fields we want for any given model. And so this is going to be connected to that recipe. So naturally, I could do models.foreign key and write that out already just to remind myself that's exactly what I want, not like a text area or something like that, okay? So the next thing is with these ingredients would be, well, again, we probably wanna have a name. We also might wanna have a description. That's certainly possible for a recipe, like, you know, this is just chicken or something, right? Or it's grilled chicken. Now that could be in the name as well. So these two fields will have some overlapping features, but it's okay, I wanna have them. Um, the next, the really important ones are the quantity and then the unit of measurement. So like 
pounds, ounces, grams, whatever, and then whatever the direction is. Okay. So notice that this ingredient here is really about the recipe itself. So scrolling back up, it's kind of like this one right here, right? It's like, hey, this is a subset of recipes. And you can imagine we can also use this same thing as just like all of my user ingredients. So, you know, my user ingredient. And then I could also do like something like a global ingredient as in for the entire site. And those would look a bit different. They would probably look a little bit more like just name and description and potentially the user in there as well, depending on what we end up doing. So that means that what we wanna talk about with this particular model is this model is directly correlated to the recipe. It's actually meant to be a child element of that recipe. So what I wanna do then is just call it a recipe ingredient. It's not one of my recipes at large. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but for now, we have just like a foundation of what we're gonna wanna do. Now, the reason we do something like this also has to do with something like if we wanted to add a model for images, right? So we'll definitely come back to this, but the idea here, when you attach a foreign key in this way, this actual parent class, the one that it's attached to, will have access to every single instance of both of these. So over the next few videos, we're gonna be seeing that in detail uh, for this recipe ingredient. And so now we wanna actually start building this stuff out. Now, certainly I could add additional data to this and at some point I might want to. Like the recipe ingredient itself, perhaps I wanna have those data items in there as well. Like when did I add this recipe ingredient and when did I update it? So let's go ahead and build this stuff out. Now, first off the user, we're gonna to wanna to grab um, from django.com. We're gonna import settings. And of course, this is identical to what we had in the article model and it's gonna be models foreign key and it's settings.auth user model. And I'll go ahead and say null equals to true or rather I don't want this null because these are really user recipes, right? So yet again, we could change this to being user recipe and user recipe ingredient. I'm actually not gonna do that. I'll just leave it in as user. And if the user itself is deleted, this might be like, oh, well, I wanna make sure that these recipes stay in my database so I can track them over time, or I wanna delete them as well. So I'll just go ahead and delete them as models.cascade. Basically like, hey, if a user is gonna delete themselves from our service, I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of them. Now, that doesn't mean we're gonna lose the recipe because we talked about this global stuff. That will, that will be something we'll come back later. Um, okay, so now we've got that built out. With this recipe itself, uh, in, in case of the recipe ingredient, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the recipe foreign key. Cool. So these are now correlated. And so now I just need to build out the other fields and they're pretty straightforward. So first off, the name is gonna be a character field and we'll do a max length of, let's say something like 220. Now with the recipe, we could totally add a slug field, but I'm actually gonna leave slug fields to more global data than individual data. Um, Cause it's probably not necessary when you're logging in and you're trying to look at any given recipe. Okay, um, so there's the name and we've got a description. This one's gonna be a text field and we'll go ahead and say blank equals to true and null equals to true. And then I'll go ahead and add in the directions as well. And then active is just gonna be models.boolean field and default being true. Okay, cool. So timestamps are pretty easy as well. So date, time, field, and we'll do auto now add being true. And then the updated field is gonna just be auto now, also being true. Cool. Um, so naturally I can actually grab these, maybe even directions and put them down here, get rid of that stuff. So in the case of direction versus directions, I think it actually makes sense to keep them both as plural, the name being plural. Um, so we'll just leave it like that. So now, of course, the actual name of any given recipe ingredient, I will give it a pretty good length as well. And then the description, same sort of description. So we'll leave that in here. And so now the quantity is going to be one that you might be like, oh, well, let's do models.integer field. And typically speaking with quantities, or you could do model.float field, 
you might actually want to do this, right? So an integer field would be like one, two, three, and so on. And then of course a float field is a float number. So 1.05 and so on, right? You could, there is a decimal field as well, but we're gonna stick with, uh, well, something different. So the reason we don't wanna do this is because users are gonna be putting this data in. At some point, we will wanna convert this mathematically, but users are gonna be putting this data in. So we have to figure that users are gonna do stuff like one and one half or one and one quarter like this. This of course is a string, but in you know terms of mathematics, that is a valid mathematical line, right? It's just how you would write it as a computer uh, or as a user to a computer. So they don't necessarily know that, you know, if we go into Python, one, one fourth is invalid Python syntax. So I'm just going to assume that users never know that and I'll have to convert this later. So that means that I'm actually going to allow a character field in here. So it's going to be just treated as a string itself. So that's it. And I'll give it a max length of 50. I mean, I can't imagine a number being bit greater than 50, like in length. So that's 50 characters versus um, if it is greater than that, then it's the next part of the quantity, right? So like pounds, ounces, grams, whatever, whatever the user is using. So yet again, I'm gonna go ahead and give the character field. And in this case, it probably shouldn't be bigger than 50 either, right? And we also wanna make it to where it's literally having, you know, the various ways of writing out these units. And that's really it. Right, so this is two models that really correspond to an actual recipe. Now I might need to change things over time, but I wanna go back to what the core of it is. First of all, this is like the parent class. This is the one that's gonna hold all of the things that come into it. And when I say hold all the things that come into it, it's like this recipe right here. This is a child element now, or it's directly related to the recipe itself because of this foreign key which also means that it's directly related to the user itself because of that foreign key. So we will definitely explore those things quite a bit. Of course, we give them names and whatnot, uh, but the actual required values would be the quantity, the unit, and the name. All of the other ones are really optional, right? So like if you think about this as to what would be required on a recipe ingredient, it's this right here. I mean, directions are probably something that should be required as well. Um, but if you just said, you know, um, half a pound of grilled chicken, well, there's not really a lot of nuance in that. So you wouldn't necessarily need directions because the, the name is in there. It says grilled chicken versus chicken and then having directions grilled. So we're just trying to think of things that every user might end up doing. And of course, we're never gonna get it perfectly right all the time. So the idea here is to just really get going with something that makes sense. And I think where we're at, all of this should hopefully make sense to you at this point. Um, so now that we've created this app and added these models, let's go ahead and add it into our installed apps and our settings. And we'll just go ahead and do recipes here. And then we'll run our migrations, so python manage.py make migrations, and then python manage.py migrate. Cool, so now what we need to do is actually see some of these things in action.